It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, everyone. I'm Gary Shorman. Welcome to the Forum on Eagle Television. It's good to have you watching along as our Forum prog program is brought to you by Hayes Med. We have a special guest that's made a great trip helping others in our part of the country uh, struggled with some hurricane relief. His name is Mike Peterson. He's a game warden with Kansas Fish and Game and parks and all that other tourism and all those other yep. things. But game warden is your main job. Yep. Law enforcement helping keep track of things there. But a few weeks ago, Houston had a big problem now, almost a month and a half ago, had a big problem with a hurricane. What caused you to say, hey, I want to do something to go help the people in Houston? What happened? Well, the when the call first came, I guess, uh, we participate with the Kansas Emergency Management Division. Um, but initially, we, we didn't think we were going. Um, but as game wardens, first and foremost, were first responders. So they, I got a call as the lieutenant, um, and I supervise five, and then we have three other lieutenants out here in western, in the west of US 81 in Region 1. Um, the captain said, call your folks and see who wanted to go. Um, we made a list of who wanted to go and what kind of boats and resources, equipment that we have for shallow water rescue. And then ultimately they went through the list and decided based on experience of who's assigned those boats that most, most of them went that were assigned and then they backfilled with other officers um, that had experience. Um, you know, some of us were older like myself um, or seasoned officers, I guess, if you will. Mm -hmm. But the, the good thing was is our, our command staff actually saw a need to bring in some of the younger guys um, that had only been on a couple of years. Uh, they've had the same trainings, but um, to get them exposure and experience of doing what we went down to do. You know, when I first heard about you guys going down, I think, you know, it's interesting you get into, you know, find a game warden in Kansas to actually be down there, but you put it together with your experience on water, your experience working around mm -hmm. with water and that sort of thing. It does tie into what was really needed there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we have three different airboats is what we took down. Um, and then we also have a bunch of flat bottom boats, duck boats, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, they've got the mud motors on them and stuff. And um, we, I think we took, we took seven flat bottoms, if I remember right, and then uh, three air boats. And the air boats are obviously shallow water rescue, and then we use them on the Kansas River. Um, there's several stations up there, and we're getting one up for the Arkansas River down at uh, Wichita. But. And when you take a look at that, you load up the boats, that's the obvious, but what else do you take when you head down to, really, to the unknown? Well, you gonna run into? <laughs> that, that was kind of the hardest thing I had. I was actually um, a secondary on the list to go, and I got called about four hours before leaving, and mm -hmm. they told me, you need to pack and get everything <laughs> ready. Um, so they kind of put together a list of things to bring, like waders. Um, actually, we took catch poles in case we came across uh, stray dogs or pets that have gotten loose and we needed to pick them up and get them back to the vet facility. Um, chest waders, hip waders, I mean, we have so many different things that we do. We have a lot of specialized equipment, so between talking with the other officers and, and kind of the lists they suggested, we just basically took everything but the kitchen sink. We couldn't even fit cots in the pickup I rode down in. We had to borrow them from, the, from FEMA, <laughs> so. Well, let's find out when you got there, what were your first thoughts uh, when you pull up and you say, you know, you start unloading this stuff, but, you know, we saw it on TV. You know, we yeah. saw the, you know, <clears throat> the flooding, the street after street of, of just water. Yeah. What did you see being on the ground that say, boy, I walk this, this is amazing. Well, the, <clears throat> to be quite honest, they sent us down <clears throat> to College Station, Texas, is where mm -hmm. the rendezvous point was, and we met up with the rest of Kansas Department of Emergency Management staff there. Um, they actually held us there for five hours, um, and then they sent us down to Rosenberg. And the, the first day we were there, actually, we just seen parking lots and, and waited. Um, for them to decide where we were going and what our mission was going to be. But the first day we went down there, we had been told, you know, there's there's a potential of electrocution with down power lines. They had a Texas game warden that had gotten electrocuted, like I think a day before. Mm -hmm. And then they also told us the water was extremely filthy. So there was, there was plenty of 
precautionary things, but and until we got down there to unload the boats, um, it, it was it was really surreal because you're driving through the city and everybody's daily life is going on. You would not know there was a, a flooded part of the city. And then you drive down the street and they've got barricades up and next thing you know the streets are flooded and the water's just rushing through there from that bayou. And uh, we back, back the boats, you know, turned around and backed the trailers right down the city street until it got deep enough and floated the boats and off we went. So, now, were you doing rescues and or just going searching home to home? We were doing, uh, we went down as a search and rescue um, group, if you will, or team. So what we were tasked with was going door to door. Um, we had to record every address that we checked. Um, and then we, if somebody wanted to come out, because a lot of these people thought that the water was going to be there for like four or five days a week and then go down. Well, with the, <clears throat> the dams broke, um, it was going to be 20 days, so we were going down in there and, and informing these people of that, and, and they still had power in the area, so a lot of them had been watching TV and knew it, so um, if they decided at that time that they wanted to go ahead and come out and not weather the storm anymore, so to speak, that we, we extracted them and marked them as such, and we had to record pets and people that we took out, and then uh, whether they wanted to shelter in place and make a go of it on their own or if there was nobody at home. One of those things you run into in that environment, you run into the people aspect. Yeah, yeah. How was it to deal with someone who had that sort of situation going on in their home? That had to be exasperating for the people, but yeah. was it a challenge for you? Um, it was. Uh, the first lady that, that the other officer and I were on the open air boat and the first gal we came across, um, you know, she had expected she was going to weather the storm. She had food, she had water. So she was prepared, but she wasn't prepared for that 20 days. And her house actually wasn't flooded. Um, but you could tell she was, she was worried due to the duration. And then they, you know, the power had been flickering on and off. And she said the night before her cable went out, so she was mad about that. And then her power had went out subsequently not too long after for, I think she said 45 minutes. So she was pretty worried. Um, and you could tell she wanted to go, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you could tell because, you know, there's a real worry there. If she leaves, looters could come in and rob her blind or steal everything she's got. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, it, yeah, it was kind of surreal because, you know, I had to kind of help her egg her yeah, on to yeah, get her bags get and her I took her process, bags out. Yeah. And then she also had a dog. Um, its name was Beethoven in case you want to know. Uh -huh. um, you got to know Beethoven. Beethoven and, yeah. I did because um, I put the harness on him and got him out. I had to carry him out to the boat and put him on the boat. And the dog was great other than when we'd get into current you'd have to give the airboat a little gas. Well of course it makes a lot of noise and he, he would want to jump out of the boat. So I'm trying to phys <laughs> physically restrain this dog. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> but once we got her out, I think, you know, I think she was relieved uh, to some extent, but worried because, you know, you're leaving everything you own behind. Were you surprised with the devastation in the homes? Because when you have water standing around in yeah. your homes, you're in your, you know, in, and it just looks to me like most of those homes are going to be real tough to rebuild without oh, yeah. having some sort of problem. Yeah, I think, you know, and that's what a lot of people asked is, you know, are are they going to go in and bulldoze these down? And I, I honestly don't know. Um, but it, it was really interesting because a lot of the houses you'd go up to, we'd, you know, we'd knock on the door, announce who we were. I was just saying, stay game warden, and then you'd knock two or three times and keep doing that, um, trying to summon anybody in the house because some of these people were in the second story level, but you were looking in the in the ground level and you could see four to five foot of water. Their couches were floating, all their belongings that would float was floating in there, and it was just weird. It looked like you took everything and put it in a bowl of water and mixed it up. Um, hmm. So it, it it was it was pretty surreal. What about some of the other? Um say the the other folks that were there where were they from that came to help and because that's one thing you see in our country you see something like that happens people come they give from all over who yeah. else did you run into there um oh it, it was a lot um of course texas was there the game wardens and and different entities from their state but uh louisiana i believe was there um 
No, one of the bigger groups we seen was Arkansas. There was places as far as Vermont um, and kind of all along the eastern seaboard, North Carolina, South Carolina. They had all sent people to help. And, and the interesting thing was once we got back up to College Station, before we came home, they were all still there and they all got shipped back out to go back home before Irma hit. You know, so they, they're there to help Texas and then all of a sudden they're going back to help their own folks. So it, it was pretty interesting and, and just seeing the, the angst in their, in their eyes and their actions of how badly they wanted to get home before it hit because they had a long drive. And mm. I'm, I'm sure they made it, but um, it was it was a tough situation over yeah. there too. So yeah. Oklahoma was there too, I guess, and uh, they had a rather large contingency. Lieutenant, I would like to take a break, come back, and and we'll talk about maybe some surprises, and then maybe what you and your team learned from that event. So we're going to take a break. Okay. We'll be back in just a little bit with Mike Peterson. Talk about those items and more here on the forum on Eagle Television. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy. Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Boost, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Boost-certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual-band modem and router, plus discreet access points to deliver wall-to-wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Boost powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Boost. Wi-Fi made simple. Only from Eagle Communications. Call today. Welcome back. It's the second half of our forum program here on Eagle Television. Our guest is Lieutenant Mike Peterson with Game Warden with Kansas Fish and Game. If you have any questions, comments, ideas for future programs, please let me know. It's gary.shorman at eaglecom.net. You can find us on Facebook as well under EC TV Forum. Lieutenant Mike Peterson is our guest here, and uh, you and your team, some of the members from here, mm -hmm. went down to Houston to help with some of the recovery efforts down there. Yep. Talk a little bit about the situation when you got there. You have your, I'll say, trailer loads of stuff. Mm -hmm. Where'd you stay? Did you did you have a did you have a Super 8 you stayed in, or what, how'd you stay? You didn't have cost. We found <laughs> that out. So. Yeah. Well, and actually, you know, I, when when we got back, some of the folks I work with, they were giving us heck that, you know, we, we had a vacation and we went down to Texas. Was it a vacation? No, it was yeah, not. It? Yeah. Um, the first night, you know, we figured they would have uh, cots and stuff provided. Because like I say, we had that truck and trailer full of everything we could think of to be prepared for anything. And and both me and the other officer, the, the cot and the sleeping bag slipped our mind. But you're also, you know, we were going down to where it's 90 degrees and 100 percent humidity um, but we got down there uh, there was no hotels ever um, but the first night we stayed in a luxurious uh, show barn in <laughs> Rosenberg Texas which actually it wasn't bad it, it had fresh concrete new concrete and then they had the real big uh, fans that run off of 220 okay. so we actually pitched our cots that we acquired from the federal government. Um, they loaned them to us and, and we went in there and pitched our cots out underneath that fan. Did you have to find your nice. own place or did they direct you to certain places? They, they directed us over to that area. That's where uh, Border Patrol and, and a bunch of the other federal agencies, uh, Customs were there. Um, and then uh, there's one other, I can't think. But, uh, but yeah, that was our first accommodations. And then, uh, surprisingly, the fan, we were cold in about 2, 3 in the morning due to the high humidity. But then uh, the, the next couple nights, we, we were actually fortunate. Uh, w they moved us up to Houston, and we stayed in a parking lot at a mall. And a lot of the guys wanted to stay out outside, but uh, myself and the, the warden that went down from Concordia with me, um, we loaded up and went. And the mall owners were gracious enough. We could go in and pitch our cots up in the mall at, after they closed. The only stipulation was you had to get out before they were open for business the next morning, but most of the activities we were out and going by 6 a.m. anyway. Um, so 
the only stipulation with the mall was you had cleaning people in there running vacuums all night. Uh, the n lights never went out uh -huh. and the elevator music never stopped. So <laughs> I actually went out and got foam earplugs that we carry for Hunter Ed and stuck them in my ears and was able to go to sleep finally. Wow, what about uh, surprises? You get down there, you're, you're on your boat, you're out there. What did you see that you're like, wow, that's, that's amazing. That's a surprise. Yeah. Um, yeah, the well, and, and it's it's silly the stuff that sticks in your mind. The first thing we we came down these city streets and we're winding through. Now this is not a city street. You're in a boat though. Yeah, you're not driving we're, down. We're there, in dude. an airboat. We're you're driving in an airboat. Shooting yeah, down there. Okay. Just like you'd be driving a car when okay. you're in the airboat. Uh, so we're idling down and and the water's just rushing out of this gated community, but the gates are open. So we're trying to get in there and the other officer's driving, so I get the opportunity to gawk around and take pictures and everything. And uh, there's this whole ch cryoback chicken. It's a Tyson chicken and it's floating down the, <laughs> down the street. So it's apparently somebody's kitchen door, came or the, the refrigerator door open and, and it there came comes the chicken. But yeah, you see this chicken just floating down the 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 street like a log. Uh, <laughs> that that stuck in my mind. But uh, one of the places we were clearing houses, we seen a, a what we believe to be a water moccasin um, or some type of venomous snake up there. We didn't get close enough to do a positive ID, but we stayed back and just ended up banging on the garage door on that house and. Um, just uh, some of the other things, I guess, when we were first coming in, we seen one of the things that really made it the whole, brought everything together and kind of struck home for me as a father was that somebody had taken the time to build one of the little um, leave a book, take a book libraries, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. community library that you see a lot of, of Kind of along the sidewalk where you can yeah. leave a little book. Yeah. Room, yeah, and one of the doors is open, and you can see there's two levels of books, and the and the bottom level, all the books are about half wet, but the the water had already gone down, but all the books in the top are fine, and they're all like middle school age books, um, but that you know, being a father, seeing that, you know, the time investment that a grandpa or a, a dad or a mom went to to put that there with her kid to teach her kid, you know. Um, how important lending is and stuff like that. And then uh, another another interesting part, a lot of these houses, they were pretty high-end houses. Um, there, a lot of them had bronze statues out front. And there was a bronze statue that was two little kids on a teeter-totter. And, and the amazing thing was is the water level was down um, below the joint in the teeter-totter. And it, it literally from afar, it looked like two kids just playing in the water on a teeter-totter. And uh, it was that I, deep. Yeah, yeah. There were there were spots where when we first got in, it was maybe a couple inches, and once we got back off the bayou, the closest city street, um, I would put it at probably 12 foot deep back there. So, oh what yeah. do you and your team learn after being through that? You you're driving back together, and what do you take away from it? Well, we learned that there were certain things we weren't prepared for, the, the types of equipment we, we thought we knew what we needed, but we needed to change. Um, one of the main things was they told us no water contact because there was just all this petroleum products. And they told us petrol is what they told us. And I asked, you know, kind of like a, a dummy, I said, what's that? Uh, can you specify? And they said, honestly, no, because all these chemical plants are released and everything. Stuff's coming out of cars. We don't know, but you know, it, it could be dangerous. So no water contact. Well, a lot of us just had chest waders. So since um, while we were actually down there, our department ordered the uh, wetsuits, I guess, if you will, dry suits is what they call them. Um, but they're they're made by a company, and you put them on, and it keeps you out of the water essentially. Um, so I know that was one of the things that, mm. that we talked about, and then. Finding or getting a, a trailer, to, if you will, that we can all sleep in and, and be self-sustaining if, if need be because, you know, it's, it's when you're working, the, the FEMA work shift was 7A to 7P, so when you're working 12-hour shifts, it, it means a lot to be able to get a shower and get all that nasty water and stuff off of you and then get a good night's sleep in air conditioning where you're not, you know, contending with mosquitoes all night long in a hundred degree temp. So well, boy that's the when you do that you don't never know when that's going to happen in Kansas, whether it be a tornado or just flooding or something yep. like that. Or dead of winter. Or dead of winter yeah. when you have the blizzards and you're stranded and all that. But thanks for uh, being a part of that effort and taking the team down there. 
many times you only see it on TV to be their first person yeah. and see that and see how the people have responded. Thanks, thanks for coming and sharing that story. Thank you. Lieutenant Mike Peterson has been our guest here on the Forum program. Forum is brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communications, our community connected. It's a beautiful day in our super high speed internet, great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected.